I, I can feel my heart. At least I have one. <sighs> All right. <laughs> um, okay. Let's think of this. Do you all know that simple task of choosing a meal from a menu at a restaurant? I don't know about you, but for me, that stuff takes me at least seven minutes to go over my options again and again. And most times, I end up asking the waiter to choose for me. <laughs> Uh, imagine having that attitude when you're asked to, uh, to decide on your lifetime career path. Uh, that, that didn't go so well for me. In fact, it took me uh, almost a decade, actually more than a decade since I graduated. Uh, but I finally decided on something. I settled on a title after a lot of experimenting. And when I say a lot of experimenting, I mean at some point I was working as a waitress, a bartender, and then uh, as in worked and then worked in an advertising agency all within one year, uh, like a span of one year. And surprisingly, they were all equal. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of um, equal experiences between them. Um, so let's talk about my title that I finally settled on. Uh, thanks to a friend who's been brainstorming uh, with me for the past three years, I decided to call myself a professional independent artist. And that means I am a person who makes music for a living and I make money out of it. Uh, it's not a hobby, it's a full-time job. Um, I perform, I also DJ at weddings. So hopefully I'm gonna start DJing at divorces as well. I'm gonna make it a thing. Watch me make it a thing, give me a year, give me a year. Um, <laughs> So I DJ, I also am a, uh, a part-time psychology instructor here at LAU. Uh, I am currently also teaching music to adolescents and I'm dabbling into acting. Um, yeah, I guess I went for the salad bar, basically. Okay, that's what I did. And uh, luckily for me, apparently this is the trend these days. Okay, millennials are somehow uh, very much interested in career independence in our time, okay? People are uh, somehow more inclined towards, towards flexibility rather than stability. And um, I guess in the States they're expecting uh, uh, the new generation to take on 33% of the workforce uh, to consist of people with non-traditional jobs uh, alternative jobs and uh, who have career independence. So I'm riding that wave currently, um, and it's been four years uh, that I transitioned into that. Four years ago, I came back from London uh, and decided to become a self-employed musician. And the thing is, uh, it totally makes sense that people want that, right? What would you, I mean, it's a, it's a great dream to, to be able to work on your own time, at your own pace, not have a boss, not have to deal with abuse of power, with hierarchy. Um, my, I mean, the premise here is autonomy, right? And for some people, they think this is what freedom is. So again, I tell you, I tried to do that for the past three, four years. And uh, that transition, basically, what happened with me was that as I was transitioning into self-employment and autonomy, the exact opposite of freedom happened. And what I mean is I suddenly became shackled by a perpetual, excruciating uh, state of uh, survival mode, all right? I was constantly anxious. I was trying to rebuild a safety net for myself from scratch. 
especially here in Lebanon, you don't have your government supporting you if you're a freelancer. You have no social security. I mean, not just for a freelancer, for anyone. Uh, but <laughs> But uh, so basically, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to build a, a safe space for myself, starting from scratch. I tried not to be financially dependent on anyone. And so what happened, I ended up being emotionally dependent on the wrong people. And I also uh, had to, to start hustling to the extent where I was taking on projects that I didn't even want, which beat the whole purpose of the whole journey, right? Uh, I mean, personally for me, what happened was that I spent more time trying to create a life that allows me to create, rather than actually being able to create. And, um, and basically, I just got really tired at some points uh, because of dealing with all this uncertainty. And this uncertainty, what do I mean by uncertainty? <laughs> Which suddenly I deliberately multiplied by a thousand for myself. So I had to deal with it, right? I had to deal with it and thinking that I'm equipped for it because I'm a psychologist, maybe I will self-therapize or something. I did seek therapy, but that's not always an option to be honest. And uh, what happened was eventually I resorted to divination and astrology and fortune tellers. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've always been inclined to those. I have always been fascinated, but it got so serious in the past four years to the extent where I actually visited almost every fortune teller in the country. I've been to Dahir Junier, I've been to Café Najjar and Ashrafi. I know them all. I know them all and actually, I would totally recommend <laughs> Elen El Basara, who is amazing. I mean, Elen was a true giver of hope for me. She's, she is the one, all right? But other than Elen, I also tripped on Maggie Farah, oh my God. Maggie Farah. <laughs> I mean, we all know Maggie, right? She's one of the best-selling authors in Lebanon, which says a lot about us as a society. <laughs> so, so I started tripping on Maggie. And uh, soon enough, Maggie became a fellow YouTuber right after me. And she started posting these monthly videos Okay, telling me uh, what my month is gonna be like, what to expect from people in my life, what to expect from my job, uh, even my emotional state, what's gonna be like, all right? So, and, and, and uh, funnily enough, I, I mean, I synced with Maggie eventually, all right? Because um, it's, it's really funny, a system works if you want it to and if you need it to. So Maggie really helped me a lot and I was so in tune with Maggie to the extent where Maggie became DJ Maggie, okay? What do I mean by DJ Maggie? You know, when you go to a rave, all right, and you just let go, you succumb to the DJ, you're like, take me, all right, take me and on a ride, you submit. And, and that DJ he slows you down, slows you down, and then builds it up for you, and then hits you with a drop, and you're feeling ecstatic, and this is, what Maggie was doing for me. She was DJing my life. In fact, in the honor of Maggie, DJ Maggie. <laughs> yes, I need to thank my friend Tiana because, I mean, she helped me realize this. This is amazing. I'm gonna create a poster. Um, <laughs> okay, let's go back. So, so, yeah, so I synced with Maggie. Maggie became DJ Maggie. <laughs> and I tried to uh, take it easy on that trip, you know? Like, I would come in and out of that trip every now and then, whenever I felt like comfortable enough to not be such a control freak and not to hold on to, 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 to want to predict things all the time and control everything. Uh, eventually, I, I learned to, to just relax and embrace this uncertainty. And, and this is where the magic happens. When you really just let go, I had a moment at some point 
where I did not care about anything, my existence, the way I looked, any of it. And I was in my kitchen, and my fridge was dying, and it was making this horrible sound for three days, okay? Probably I was going insane. That's, all right, it wasn't like feeling comfortable with uncertainty. Probably I was losing my mind, but regardless, okay, let's make the assumption <laughs> that I actually was feeling comfortable being myself. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I uh, took out my phone and I filmed myself singing with a dying fridge. And I was so comfortable with it that I posted it online. <laughs> Can can we play can we play the video please yeah <laughs> that fridge. I had Arabs Got Talent call me, but I said no because I, I loved my teaching post so much at the time. Uh, and I was not going to go on national TV with a fridge on a stage. <laughs> uh, after that, um, I also got a call um, because of the fridge song. This guy from Egypt, he's a filmmaker, he calls me and he asks me to uh, do a soundtrack for his short, short film, which we just recently finished and it's going to be out in a few months. And uh, several producers, a local one and an amazing one as well in Austria, uh, took my fridge song and remixed it. <laughs> And it sounds amazing, actually, like a gladiator soundtrack. Um, but uh, but yeah, so these things happened, and I was I was lucky enough that they did. They they kind of encouraged me. That's what they did. I mean, they encouraged me to keep at what I was doing. You know, there are a lot of people who are who get into this game, and eventually they get so tired, or something happens, and they're forced to, to quit or to get back to the structure, you know, or, or maybe take a break, all right, and get back in. But for me, what happened was I managed to keep at it, and I kept at it long enough uh, that eventually I caught the rhythmical experience of uncertainty. And by rhythm here, I mean that there was some sort of cycle a, a pattern and a sense of regularity within that experience of uncertainty, which means that there's repetition, all right? And with repetition comes certainty. And suddenly the uncertain became certain to me. I experienced certainty even within uncertainty. And that certainty was actually my experience of being in tune with my own rhythm. I got to a point where I understood the way I function, and I understood and grasped my ebbs and flows, my emotional ebbs and flows, you know, my seasonal fluctuations, my triggers. I, I, I got it all, I understood it. And once you're, once you're in tune with that, I mean, <laughs> I'm not really going to tell you what happens because I just did it today and I closed my 28 cycle <laughs> of patterns just today with this talk. And I feel like I am completely liberated. 
So I hope this could happen for you, that you just grasp your rhythm and good luck to you. And I hope that helps you at least, gives you some sort of inspiration. And please do listen to the Fritz song. Uh, it's on YouTube. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Good luck.